Welcome to Our Own Mind, where me, Ariel Free. And me, George Lawton, get to have a chat to some of your favourite celebrities all about their homes. Uh, and you can listen to us, but this season you can watch us. So pop over to Primark's YouTube channel to catch all the episodes so far. Right, today we are welcoming back someone who made their debut in the very first episode of the very first series. And a lot has changed since then. Even his name, actually. He's hot fitted it to Birmingham, but his dream house, he's content creator, comedian, writer, and one of our absolute favourite guests. Please welcome David White. Yes. I'm so excited to see how you've progressed, how your house has progressed. Uh, first of all, we have to address the fact that I was not also mentioned as a sex symbol. So we'll just, oh, yeah, sorry, let's just sorry. work on that for future. But um, other than that, no, it's so it's so lovely to see you guys in the flesh. Last time we did this, yes. it was not in the flesh. We were in that great. weird dungeon and you were like, where are you yeah. guys? Yeah, that was a bit sinister, wasn't yeah. it? All right, we're going to hear all about your new place. Yes. Is, should we go around yours? Yes, let's go around mine. Let's do it. All right. So here is a tour of some of my favourite rooms in my house. Um, this is one of my favourite rooms because, you know, it's it's got the piano in it. And I like that. I like having a room with a... I like a room with a grand piano and the vibe and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and I like the way the lights from the front kind of like just reflect off the floor, stuff like that. Um, and then we go into the living room, which I like because it's got all of my favorite comic book stuff there. Um, I like this painting because my dad actually painted this painting. And this is actually my house from the back. So this is how my house looks from the back. So he painted that right in the middle of the painting, which of course makes me love this room as well. And then you have the kitchen, which I just love because I just love the amount of space. And I love how I can look out on the back garden I love the skylight as well that descends down there. You can see the reflection. Um, so I just like the, I like the level of space in the kitchen. I love having a spice rack and stuff like that. And then I also love um, this room in here because it was like a passion project of mine, um, which is to just have a wardrobe in the house. This room was just like a dingy walkway to the back garden before, but I've got it patterned now. So it's like, yeah. I can put like all of my clothes with color are in here. So my black clothes are somewhere else, but all the clothes with color is like in this room. Um, let's continue the tour. Um, I'll show you the last room on this little tour. I'm not gonna show you everything. Also in the kitchen is another one of my dad's paintings. And then obviously I'm gonna love the gym. Ah, oh, David. You, know what? you changed. Yeah. <laughs> you have changed. Because the first episode we have the you hadn't even like bothered with the lighting. You just mm. got some strip LED lights and yeah. put them everywhere and then that was your way of decorating. Yeah. You have like I mean, it's only been like a year and a bit since we last put to you, but what an incredible like yeah, upgrade and journey and actually how much you care now about you. Yeah, like, man, because where it's where you lay your head in it. So mm. I just loved I loved that about it. And um Obviously, I looked at. I think when we did it last time, that wasn't my that wasn't my home. You were home, yeah, yeah, you were home yeah, second, yeah, weren't you? yeah, yeah. So and then it's like with this now. I looked at so many different houses trying to find like what was me. As soon as I saw this place, I was like, yeah. Like I had this whole other house that I had my mind set on. But as soon as I saw this place, I told the people buying it as um, that were buying selling it. I was like, this is my home. Mm. So oh, I'll wow. need you to leave as soon as you leave. <laughs> First of all, just get out of my property. And yeah, it, it all worked out, but I, I love it. Well, why did you make, decide to move back from London to Birmingham? Was that was always in your mind that you were going to do that? Always. Happiness, yeah. um, number one. Um, shout out to London, but I'd like to be <laughs> able to... I'd like to be able to park in front of my own property without paying anybody. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to see grass, mm -hmm. um, things like that. And yeah, I'd, obviously, like when I, I... Being from Brom, when I first came to London, I remember, obviously, I used to work right near Oxford Circus. And I remember coming there with my Birmingham pace. I walked through... When, you, when you're in Birmingham City Centre, there's a pace that you walk with that suggests you have nowhere to go and nothing to do. Mm -hmm. That's not London's pace. London's pace is if you don't cross this road in time, <laughs> you will die. Yeah. And yeah. so... <laughs> and so like, I'm just more used to Birmingham speed. So I want to uh, look back onto your home tour just yeah. then, because 
Uh, I remember first time we had you on, there were so many things we wanted to discuss and now there's even more. Um, the painting to begin with really oh, stood man. out to me. It's incredible. And that was totally all painted by your My dad. dad yes, yeah, shocked me. Like I said, I want something for that wall because the wall felt barren. So he and did it specifically for your yeah, house? Yeah, yeah, he did it specifically for my house. But it's like, I didn't expect it to be that big. Mm. Like it was, it's humongous. Like if he was in the house, you'd understand that it's massive. So I was, I was very impressed by it. And then to have the actual house be painted in the middle, yeah. of you know this meadow and everything like that it just looks it looks amazing and I, and I, I literally love it mm. is he a painter by trade then or no, is it well, I mean, yeah he used to be but he, do, he doesn't anymore both my parents are, are retired now but like he just i don't know he was just a labor of love like i mm. asked him so to do gorgeous. something and i want to know how you shipped it because it's massive no he brought he brought it in his van yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah 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 he brought he brought it over yeah, yeah yeah how did the piano get brought over did someone ship that over as well um they delivered that in pieces and let me tell you something right now that piano is Heavy, mm. like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, got lots of buttons on it, so that means you can change like the yeah, settings you, on yeah, it. Yeah, you can change the sound and everything like that. And like, I, you know what it was? Yeah, <laughs> the previous owners of the house. They had a piano mm -hmm. in that room mm -hmm. and that's what gave me the idea. Now, granted, it wasn't as wild as this piano, <laughs> but yeah, I, do, I just wanted a piano in that room because I saw the white piano vibe yeah. and I was just like, yeah, I like this. And then I thought to myself, if I if I spend a decent amount of money on a piano, I've always wanted to learn how to play, then it will make me learn how to play. I've now learned that that's untrue. <laughs> oh. So yeah, 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 it won't. It, nothing you will make me... Like a chin yeah, I was going to say you did a few chords. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah I've, that's all I've learned in the months that I've had it. Okay, but can you, if you've got like a fancy dinner party going, on just click a button and it'll start playing itself and yes, you can make it feel yes, really fancy uh, yes I can do that okay. but yeah when people see that, that the hand motion doesn't match with the sound <laughs> then it ruins the ruse um, well we have been dying to know one thing mm -hmm. um, in your new house we're going to listen to this from the first episode mm -hmm. um, your number one fan item I actually when I bought I bought it with chest but once I spread it on my bed and I realised that I had this other dude spread across my bed <laughs> but it's, it's not even the cartoon it's the actual Chris Hemsworth just yes. picture that is just on my bed and now I'm lying under Chris Hemsworth <laughs> and I'm just like this is a bit crazy but I'm cool with it so is Chris Hemsworth still an item in your bedroom unfortunately <gasps> not I lost him in the move no I oh. lost Chris I, I'm not, now that you've reminded me I'm gonna get him back mm. I have to because I, I I liked I like funky bedding yeah you get what I'm saying like I like lying under certain that I enjoy. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. No, I'm, I'm getting her back. I'm that get sentence sounded wild, but yeah. I'm glad you're getting him back because I was getting a bit worried about you there because it sounded to me like you'd lost some of your fun. Oh, I, I listen. Fun. Yeah, I, no Chris Hemsworth on his bed. Yeah, what is it now? Yeah. Is it white? Yeah, it's just it's literally just plain sheets. Yeah, and that. And like, see what I'm I, I actually lost my Thor hammer as well. Like, literally, <gasps> like, yeah. No! Yeah, like, like, I need to get it back, yeah. Like, in, in the move, everything Thor-related got lost. It, no, that's weird. It's someone super it. weird. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And I didn't have stuff. Sounds, I don't have stuff. I only have like, clothes. That sounds like one box went missing. Mm. So I feel like you would have put Chris Hemsworth and the Thor hammer yeah, in true. one Probably box. True. Yeah, Thor box. Where did the Thor go? box got missing. Yeah. But you've still got the nice little sort of superhero shrine on yes, your on your sort of shelf mantelpiece. I do, you? which which annoys all of my friends. Why? What's on because it? they think that it is an interior disaster. <laughs> no, but I love it. That's all that matters. It's I your love house. it. Yeah. yeah. Like one of the things that's in there is like this little pokeball. I've got three of them, mm -hmm. but it conceptualizes what life is like inside the Pokeball for Pokemon. Okay. Like it shows Bulbasaur in like on a sandy beach and stuff <laughs> like that. Have you ever wondered what Pokemon are doing inside the Pokeball? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not until now, but yes, all so of a yeah, sudden. Little cool stuff so like that. So it shows you what they're up to in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like that. I take it all back. You've definitely not lost your fun. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm a, I'm a nerd. Da, 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 da. But you have got organised because you've got a lovely organised mm. wardrobe now. But only yes. for all the colourful clothes, which I quite yeah, enjoy. Yeah, yeah, because I like, I have a whole black wardrobe. It, my black wardrobe looks stupid because it's like <laughs> looking at the same thing over and over again. It's like looking in like a men in black um, closet yeah. where it's like you, you can't imagine that a men in black character has anything but just the suits. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So literally mm -hmm. it's like I've got all of those clothes under an Ottoman bed. Every mm -hmm. bed in my house is an Ottoman bed. Oh wow. Yeah, so there's like four beds in the house, but all even though I'm the only one that lives there. But but like all of them are Ottoman beds and I just put clothes underneath them. You moved uh to the UK from yes. Jamaica when yes. you were 11, right? I say so many different ages. <laughs> 9, 10, 11. All right, we'll go, we'll go with 11. Yeah. Um, do you have anything in your home now that reminds you back of Jamaica? Um, I think maybe my, my, my dad's painting. Yeah. Um, seasoning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Seasoning. Um, what, <laughs> what else? Um, 
myself, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but yeah, probably my dad's painting because I feel mm -hmm. like they've got um, that very Jamaica and um, those colors and that vibe kind of thing. And um, yeah, probably that just, yeah. Yeah. And the food, the food that I choose to eat as well. Mm -hmm. Like, like I just have plantain everywhere. Just, just everywhere, like sweet potato and stuff like that. So stuff that, that I used to love back home. Yeah. Yeah. In those paintings, there's a lot of landscape of like yeah, shrubbery, yeah, yeah, like yeah, tropical yeah, vibes yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. If actually in my dad's painting, he explained this to me actually, is that like one side of the painting is like more of a British countryside and the other side is a Jamaica countryside on purpose just to merge the two together. So he had explained that to me, but I just remembered that this moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you have any plants that you are... Like dad too? Are you good with like plants in the garden, no. in the house? I've just discovered them, my dad. It's like, it's like an episode of Maury because it's like, <laughs> <laughs> literally I got, I went into this house in the winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what plants I had. Yeah. So every day I come out now to the back garden, I keep noticing new stuff that I've, there's an apple tree, but I didn't know that I had an apple tree. Uh -huh. And then there's this other pink tree thing. I don't know what, I don't know plants, yeah. but yeah. So I'm, I'm now father to a couple. I do want to talk about your garden though, yes. because uh, oh, it's the gosh. dream really, because we've had a lot of people on this podcast, right? That have done quite serious gardens, yes. with, you know, a nice entertaining area. Yeah. Um, but you've gone, you've gone full childhood fun with it really, haven't you? Let's say that I'm at war in my garden <laughs> and I'm losing <laughs> with who? Um, wildlife. Um, uh. Oh, really? I, I, okay, so the house came with fish, right? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't ask for fish, uh, uh. but it came with, but it, came, it comes them. with the fish. I do love them now. Yeah. Because yeah. if you live with somebody for long enough, you're going to love them, right? Yeah, of so, course. That I've got fish and they are <laughs> low maintenance creatures, right? I don't have to pet them, which is impossible. So I just literally feed them and uh -huh. they don't even need feeding every single day. Uh -huh. So that's been easy. But literally, literally every animal conceivable has been in my back garden. Mm. Since what, summer. trying to get the fish? No, or not even. Some of them are trying. The heron is, keeps trying to get the yeah. fish. And herons are humongous. Yeah. And like the fish pond is not that far from the back door. So when you see this massive <laughs> heron scary. just chilling there, it's scary. Yeah. Also, I have a duck invasion. But the ducks keep coming and chilling in the pond. And like... <laughs> I get people on my Instagram to name the ducks. Uh -huh. oh, and I so they it. named, so there's two ducks. There's Bunny and there's Clyde. That's what they named them, Great. right? Great. Like, with male and female, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's that, those are the ducks. They keep coming every day. I'm like, and eventually I accepted it, okay? <laughs> yeah. But then the other night, the other day, sorry, I woke up and I, I looked outside and there was three Clydes. So I don't know what this means. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's like a lad's holiday or a stag do. I don't know what's going what's going on. And and Bunny is also extremely pregnant. So I don't know what that means oh, for me in the future. Oh, you ducklings. Let's not speak negativity on me. Uh -huh. No. But, <laughs> but yeah. Like, how, you can't hate on ducklings. Or, no. Also, I've got a cat that the internet has named Garfield. It oh. has it has a colour, but it don't seem to want to go back to its own house. Mm -hmm. It lives at my house. Great. And for some reason, this cat is actually king of the jungle in my back garden because it even chased the fox away in my back garden. Oh, wow. Because foxes will get, the, yeah, well, they'll get the fish. Yeah, I've mm. got a video of this little cat chasing the fox and the fox running away for about 10 minutes. It's crazy. You're basically like the Dr. Doolittle of Birmingham. Yeah. Oh my, I've been called Dr. Doolittle. I've been called Evan Almighty. I've been called Ace Ventura. <laughs> I've been called everything you can think I've been called David Attenborough, everything you can think of. But I'm starting to think Wildlife Sanctuary could be a little side hustle Again, for you. Again, my house has been called Charge Wildlife entry. Sanctuary. My house has been called Pride Rock. My uh -huh. house has been called yeah. a zoo. It's been called a nature reserve. It's been called a sanctuary, everything. And there's one thing notably missing though in your Wildlife Sanctuary, because mm -hmm. you've got a big garden. Yes, Why are you not yes. going to get a dog? Okay, so I've only recently got over my fear of dogs. Really? When I was in Jamaica, oh my God. When I was in Jamaica, um... A dog chased me and bit me in my bottom. Oh. And since then, yes, you can laugh. It's all right. I'm over <laughs> it now. <laughs> when I was younger. Um, Terrifying um, as a It kid, was my though. fault, mm. to be fair. That it was the neighborhood dog. Uh -huh. And I thought that the dog was sick. And I thought I was a clever kid. Mm -hmm. So when I watch TV shows, doctors inject people to make them feel better. Mm -hmm. So I had this little thorn and I injected the dog to make the dog feel better. Well, yeah, the dog felt do better immediately. <laughs> And chased me. And when I was running, you know, when you get running, you're running and you get tired. Mm -hmm. uh, I bent over and put my hand on my knee and started oh, breathing no. heavily. And that's when he got his own back. Oh, and no. I've been scared of dogs ever since. And I literally only got over it since um, like last year or so. Because 
um, ZZ Mills, who I do a podcast with because she always brings her dog who is named Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, after you? Yeah, yeah, not after me. <laughs> I would love that narrative to be true, but it's not. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So because she kept bringing the dog around. He's a cute little dog. Like, I, so I didn't feel like I had to fear him that much. And he always, always running up to me and stuff like that. So I had to, I gained like a kinship to the dog and mm. then I've just gotten used to dogs now. Are you saying your namesake is a chihuahua? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I'm yeah. all right with that. <laughs> and then if you were to get a dog, you've got like the trampoline. Yeah. Isn't there like loads of like, you've got loads of quad stuff in bike. the Yeah, like bike. Yeah, like I've got a quad bike, trampoline. The dog would love you. Like literally, it's so weird the order in which I've bought stuff. Like <laughs> I bought that trampoline before I bought furniture, like proper <laughs> like mad order. I bought a seesaw, but it was like a kid's seesaw. I sat on it once, it broke. Amazing. So just, that's just at the bottom of the garden now and stuff like that. But yeah, nah, a dog, a, a dog would literally, I could take the dog for a walk in the back garden I think, mm -hmm. and I think it'd be all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you've got the dog, you've got like the games, you've got the quad bike, you've got trampoline. Mm. Uh, who, are you, who are you inviting around? So name your top three guests you'd love to have over. Uh, of all time? Of all time. Anybody? Yeah. I didn't even Only know. Only three. Only three? Tough. Oh, snap. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go with Will Smith, <laughs> yeah. definitely for so many different magical reasons. Um, who else? Let's say Will Smith first. Will Smith would be a right laugh on the quad bike, yes. I reckon. Yes, and I the actually, trampoline. And the trampoline. I yeah. actually met Will Smith. Did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we actually spoke briefly, and that is the highlight of my life. Where was this? Yeah. Tell us all about it. Um, it was at the premiere of his um, King Richard. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it literally, on um, British um, UK premiere, and like he was walking from the red carpet and I was walking to it and then mm -hmm. we walked past and head nodded each other and I was like, wait, no. I don't get to just walk past Will Smith and head nod him. That's the, that's just, it feels wrong. Yeah. I, 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 I immediately felt like I shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. Like I was just like, I'm, I'm not worthy of this level. But yeah, no. And then afterwards I came back in and then we just started speaking for a second and yeah. I've got uh, it on video and everything. Mate. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. so good. Who else would be my other two? Um, maybe Britney Spears so she could perform Toxic Live <laughs> Um, um, just a favorite tune or love it? Yeah, Brit Toxic. Oh my god, I'd love to have been in the studio when that was made. That was it's just, it's just what a, is it's it just about? A, it it's a legendary song. Yeah, yeah. I, no, used to, I, I agree. I, when when Toxic came out, right? Mm -hmm. I don't remember having the internet or anything like that at the time. I remember sitting um, in front of my television on MTV base, waiting for the song to come back around. <laughs> like literally, just sitting there waiting. I would wait for hours for Toxic to come back on. Mm -hmm. He's just a legendary track to me. Who would be my third person? I should. I feel like I should be saying really deep things, but nah. No, no, no. no like, absolutely like, not. Yeah, I just You're there to have fun. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, I'm just there to have fun. Who would yeah. be the third person that I would invite round? Um, Drake. <sighs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Guest choice. Oh, that's a really yeah. good guest choice. Second, sorry. That's a really good guest choice. Yeah, yeah, like Drake, 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 definitely. Yeah. Because I, I just, I love his music, so I would, I would love to pick his brain. I mm -hmm. just about his, you know, musical process. So your like evening that. with that trio, what are you going to get up to? You're going to go in the games room, play some, yes, uh, games room, play some board games. <laughs> games room definitely to do the punching machine because <gasps> I wanted to two of my that. guests are men, and egos come into place when the punching machine gets involved. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, actually, the girls seem to be way more competitive when it mm. comes to the punching machine. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, to the point where they hurt their hands. They'll punch it so many times trying to get a higher score than each other. Uh -huh. I'd be that person. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything that I get, I kind of get it in mind for friends because yeah. I mm. am the come to mine and let's play board games or let's let's yeah. or chill at mine. I'm a homebody. Yeah. So mm. when I buy different things in my house, I buy them with that mm -hmm. in mind. You did once say on your Instagram, I didn't choose the bougie owner life, it chose me. <laughs> what is the bougiest thing about your new place? I think the bougiest thing about the place is that it's got two kitchens and four bathrooms. Wow. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. So when I, when I got the place, I thought they showed me the whole house and then there's this whole other section. So my house actually has two front doors and, like, and they're both like separate from each other and stuff like that. Wow. So I just can't, I just keep imagining when I eventually have kids being able to really go away from them like right. or, or do you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah. I can really escape you I go thought you were like oh nah. I mean like let them have their nah. own bedroom yeah, their yeah. Own so we, can, we can market it like that if it works better for you but for me it's freedom <laughs> and space but yeah now nah, I really enjoy that yeah, yeah I love how excited you are yeah, about because, two kitchens no it's, it's awesome because like literally like when you invite friends over to like let's be very clear here yeah if you buy a property you get into the property competition game. <laughs> when I go over to my 
other friends' houses, I'm just looking around and hating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything if that they have that I don't have, I hate. And it, like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's a proper competitive thing. So literally, when it comes to like the four bathroom things, anytime my friends come over and then everybody needs the bathroom, I'm like, you can all pee at the same time. <laughs> like, I, I, I just love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it that bougie means to you? Um, I think bougie is just your attitude towards it. Mm. So like I, you could have a humble attitude towards it or you could just be like really proud about the things. Yeah. And I'm and I'm really proud of the accomplishment of having mm. this home because I, I, know, I feel like I worked hard for it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And um, that's that's my attitude towards it. Like I'm, I'm about my home. Mm -hmm. Different people, everybody has their thing that they brag about or boast yeah. about. Mm -hmm. I didn't buy the big watch or the big chain. I just like living in this house. Like this was always my dream to just have a home do you yeah. know what I mean yeah. like yeah. I see I see myself having a family there one day I, mm. I look at you and say this is my forever place do you know what I mean so that's my thing yeah yeah you've also described yourself as a content creator and clout chaser yes. what exactly does a clout chaser mean um well obviously clout is is the same thing as popularity fame you know reputation and stuff like that um and when I describe myself as a clout chaser I just feel like I'm being honest about what everybody else already is. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like um when years ago when Kanye West said in um all falls down, we're all self-conscious. I'm just the first to admit it. So uh. that's that's my thing. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I feel like we all chase different versions of clout. Like some people it's clout with your friends, some people it's clout yeah. with the internet, some people it's clout with this. So I just I just say it as like as a joke, yeah. But yeah. every everybody does it to a certain extent. What's your mm -hmm. clout? Um, home clout is yeah. definitely one of my clout. happy clout. Like, really? I don't, like, like my whole thing is to be happy. Like some people like, some people get in their sad bag. Like they like <laughs> to like, let you know they're the saddest in the room. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Or the most deep, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? The most like, I'm really deep and what, what I say really means things and stuff like that. I'm about yeah. happiness. Like and that, I like to be the happiest in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that totally life. comes across in your house. I mean, everything yeah. in there is there to make you happy. Literally there to make me happy. And I remember from the first time that we spoke to you, you mm -hmm. spoke about having a 65 inch TV in yeah, your room because yeah, yeah. you need time for yourself, time yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. make yourself happy. I, 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 I'd rather have a TV in my room than in the living room. Mm. Some people can't, some people can't have a TV in yeah. their room, but yeah. like, yeah, nah. My room is really my house. Uh -huh. Like I have to, that's where I'm going to spend most of my time yeah. in my room. Yeah. So like, yeah, I have to have a TV. In Do you have a game set up in that room as well? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, my PlayStation is definitely in my room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have more than one PlayStation? No. Okay. Yes. But that's because I have all of the consoles. So I have PlayStation one, two, three, and four and yeah. five. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's like a museum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because there's games on the PlayStation 1 that I still love. That, uh -huh. Like, don't get it twisted. Like, there's PlayStation 1 games that still are better than all these newer games. What still I holds love a, that. a special place Loads in Loads of heart. ones. Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. Like, oh, if you're yeah. talking about PlayStation 2, Simpsons Hit and Run. Like, there's, oh, yeah. there's loads of games from back in the day where it's just like, the new games cannot compare. Um, I grew up in Scotland and you grew up in Birmingham. Mm. And I know from my experience of getting into this industry, as a non-Londoner can be quite tough. That's why mm -hmm. I first moved to London. I've been here for yeah. years. Um, how did you make it happen despite like not being in London, first of all, when you mm -hmm. began? Well, I mean, I, I think that I just built something up in Birmingham first. Like I built up um, a reputation in Birmingham first. And yeah. I, obviously I started with comedy and stuff like that. I used to rap back in the day, but then when I used to rap, I never felt like I was being 100% myself I mean. in the sense that I felt like, or not even so much that I wasn't being myself. I felt like I was promoting things I didn't want to promote. So, um, but then I always loved to laugh. I was always the class clown and stuff like that. So then I, I, I picked up comedy. And I think what really took things to the next level for me is actually working with London creators. Mm. So I think that's what made right. it for me. So like, I, because it's the, it's the gift of the internet that you can just cross borders. I never had to come to London to do it. I had this clever idea right, if I, if I may say so myself, to do what I would call phone call videos. So I would have phone conversations with people from London that were popular. So once I built up a reputation in Birmingham and had a couple of followers and stuff like that, yeah. I would message London artists. And the first London artist that I got to do a video with me was actually Gigs. Yeah, wow. yeah, it was crazy. Like I messaged him and I said, would you be up for doing this video? You don't have to leave your house. Yeah. It's a phone mm -hmm. call video. So you just have to pretend to be on the phone to me whilst we have a conversation about you taking my girl. That and like, <laughs> yeah, literally, and he just... 
he was on it. And once I got the gigs video, I used the gigs video to get everybody else. Next people I met message was Crepton Conan and I got them to do one with me. And then I, I messaged them and said, look, gigs done one. Would you guys be willing to do one? And, and then I would led. take that one and, then, and I'd message Chip and mm -hmm. I'd be like, these guys have done one. Would you be willing to do one? And that's how I kind of, yeah, built myself I feel up. like a lot of people discovered that in the pandemic, they, they got the home set up and they mm -hmm. started to like be able to, we mm -hmm. all had to create content mm -hmm. from home. Mm -hmm. We didn't see that in your home tour. Do you have a setup for your like, your yeah, like, video making? Pretty much everything content. I do is from home. So right. like most of, the most of the stuff that I do, I self film. Right. I f uh, when I say self film, like I film in house kind yep. of thing. So I film it at the home. I've got I've got light when I when I did that home tour, I had to move all my lights out of the way. I've got <laughs> lights and camera and everything set up at my home, green screen, all of that, everything. Yeah. Do you still mm -hmm. have the LED lights? I don't because they don't work yeah. with this house as much. I feel like LEDs work with like <laughs> apartments. But like when you like buy a home and my home is like a like, more like an old school home with the wooden floors and stuff like that. I don't know how LED and wood work. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. You've changed though, because if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. Uh, our first, our first chat together. Yeah. That was your favorite thing in the yeah, whole world. Yeah, I know. I know. I know yeah. Like I used to, I used to love it, but it just don't work now. Wow. Right now, I've, I love grass now. Like I love like more earthly things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've become an earth person. I always hated earth people, but <laughs> <laughs> not hated, but you know what I mean. Like I, I, I can't stand it when people love grass too much. Like yeah. But yeah, like I've become an earth person. Now. And do you think that was part of the reason that you decided to move back to Birmingham? Um, yeah. Escaping all the sort of concrete and yeah. But then I think. It's a, I think it's more of a mindset than actually escaping the concrete because I came London the other day and there was grass. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I couldn't yeah. see it when I was here. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, so it's like, it's it's the concrete jungle yeah, in yeah. your brain. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? When you're here, you feel like you're in like a super rat race yeah. and with, with Birmingham, everything just feels super slowed down. And when you first moved here, did mm -hmm. part of you think I'll always always head back to Birmingham or did yeah. you think you'd be in London for the No, I, I always thought I'd move back to, my whole family's yeah. there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My whole family's there, my church is there. So it's yeah. just like, yeah, I always knew I was going to move back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did, however, come to London for your starving role in Top Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did that come about? Did someone approach you? Like, did you approach them? Like, I feel like anybody that's actually a cast member of Top Boy that ever sees this is going to be like, why is he begging it? He was in there, <laughs> he was in there for like 10 seconds. <laughs> but yeah, like Chase people, the but people, yeah, I got to change the cloud. <laughs> people really do stop me on the streets mm -hmm. yeah. and say, "Yo, you was in Top Boy," it's and huge. I was in there for five seconds. Literally, I was at the start of one of the episodes. Mm -hmm. But but what's interesting is that literally, um, it, I was in a scene where a girl was rapping, and a girl from Birmingham, um, OG Nikki, she wrote the rap for the for the girl in the scene, right. and they asked her, "Who do you think would be a good MC to like host a rap battle?" And mm -hmm. she recommended me, and then wow. they had me on, and that's, that's how amazing. I got on. And what, what's interesting about it is like that is like a a personal yes moment yeah. for me because I love Top Boy as a show. Amazing. So this isn't like, I don't look at that as a career achievement. Like it's very rare for me that I have things where I feel like personally gassed. Yeah. Mm. I don't even know that I'm going to feel personally gassed because that's how little gas is me. I've, I've, you, you know, cause we've both worked <laughs> in the same station. Yeah? yeah. Like we see famous people all the time. Yeah. So you kind of get used to it. Like that's why when I saw Will Smith, it threw me off. I wasn't ready. Like when I saw him, I was like, this man raised me. <laughs> No, no, think about it. Yeah. He really, yeah, no, totally like, he yeah. raised us, like, yeah. Yeah, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Independence Day, like, yeah. all of these films. Mm. Like, I, when you're standing in front of me, it's like, you have entertained me yeah. for decades. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, it was it was that kind of moment for me being in Top Boy because I watched it as a fan looking in. And it's like, now I'm, and as I said, I, and obviously, you know, Drake has something to do with Top Boy as well. Yeah. And then I'm a Drake fan. And then it's just like, I have to believe he saw my face now. Yeah. So, <laughs> I like that. But you know what they say, don't meet your stars. So was there a bit of a risk? Were you a little bit scared that you might do this and then suddenly fall out of love with it? Well, nah, 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 nah. I know, I know what the filming process is like anyway. Like we filmed like for like 10 hours and mm -hmm. I was in there for 10 seconds. So <laughs> I, I, already, I already know what that's like anyway. And if you meet enough people, you, you, you kind of learn to disassociate their personalities when you meet them in the moment from yeah. their art, especially mm. seeing as you're meeting them in a hypersensitive situation yeah. where mm. they, they might have done a lot of press that day. So you might not get the best version of them. We've all been through that yeah. ourselves. So I kind of understand. Yeah. And is acting something you want to potentially look more into? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because I feel like a lot of what I do is acting anyway. If yeah. I do an advert for a brand and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and I write a scene, that's acting. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, I've never been one of those people that feel like you can only call yourself something if you do it in an official sense. Yeah. Mm. If, if you recite something and then say it on camera, you have acted. Yeah. And, and when people come to me and say, 
how do I be a presenter or how do I be an actor? I'm trying to stop doing that. You're yeah. an actor. You don't have to be, you don't have to be in a Steven Spielberg, Hollywood film to be an actor. You mm-hmm. act, you're an actor. And that's, that's always been my vibe. So it's definitely something I would do again because I already have done it. Well, I was going to say, and you've already done a lot of singing and a lot of songwriting. Yeah, so yeah, technically yeah, yeah. makes you a singer yeah, as well. I've, yeah, I've been, a, I've, been a, I've been a singer. Yeah. So like for now, I would say that I'm an actor with the acting credits of being in Top Boy. So yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> you just mentioned there though, like a lot of people come to you like, what can I do if being I want to be a presenter what yeah, I do yeah. I want to be content you're very open online about your journey and how yeah. you've got to where you are what advice do you give to people coming to you for their for advice in this industry um don't leave your nine to five to come over here and think that it's not going to still be a nine to five if not yeah. a nine to nine like if you come over here with that a lot of people leave their jobs to come over this side to because they think it's going to be easier but it's not, it is anxiety inducing <laughs> when you do not have somebody to regularly pay you. You're just out here on hope and vibes. It doesn't, it, and it doesn't matter how successful you get. Somebody, it's like when you have one job, you know where the money is coming from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you are doing a lot of what we do is like, you kind of just have to be like, I hope somebody gives me something next month. Yeah. Yeah. I hope something yeah. every single yeah. month. And mm-hmm. yes, you might build up a lot of money, but the anxiety doesn't leave. Do you get what I'm saying? Especially if you come from humble backgrounds, humble beginnings. So what I would say to people is come over here to work. You, you have to work. And a lot of things you thought you wouldn't have to do over here, you still have to do. You still have to know how to market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, have to, you have the product, which may be your personality, but you still need to know how to market yourself. Yeah. You still know, need to know how to monetize and make money from yeah. it and all of these different things. Yeah. So I say to people, come over here, prepare to do the work yeah. so when you do because we knew you as Sideman yes. and obviously mm. you're now David Whiteley but then you, you say you're not bothered by going between the both yeah, are yeah. you yeah. What, at what occasion do you use to like or did you choose to use yeah. each name yeah so I'm not really concerned with how other people refer to me I'm more concerned about how I refer to myself yeah. mm-hmm. so when I'm doing my content I'll refer to myself as David Whiteley right. enough times until that name builds enough clout mm-hmm. that naturally you won't say side man anymore. Do you get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not depending on anybody else to not say it anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm going to build it to where you would naturally say David Whiteley because mm-hmm. I right. understand that it takes a transition. If somebody knows you by a name for a certain amount of time, then, you know, eventually it would take some time. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to be really b- bullish about it. Like, no, don't call me by <laughs> that anymore. You know what I mean? It's like you called yourself that, mate. So, uh, <laughs> you know and, what I mean? and what was it that encouraged you to make that transition? Um, I'm doing more serious things uh-huh. mm. and, and I feel like walking into certain rooms as side man is not going to work for me yeah. when I'm doing those more serious things I'm writing a book at the moment and stuff like that I'm doing more behind the scenes things and so yeah I just felt like a name change was due mm. can yeah. you tell us more about the book plus my parents take the mick out of me for being called side man too much <laughs> um, or the book, it's, it's a fiction book and that's all I can say on it so it's Ooh. not autobiographical dun, dun, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's very exciting yeah, yeah, yeah. have you written a draft yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been edited right now. Yeah, yeah, I've written. A, that was a whole different process for me. I'm used to doing something really quick and getting to the bag. Mm. That's you find, what I'm used to. Did you find it a challenge? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I, when I came into this game, one of the things that I said to myself is, I will change when I need to. Mm-hmm. So whenever certain things, certain jobs or certain things that you're going to take on, certain ambitions require a complete change of how your work ethic works. Mm. And how my work ethic has worked for a long time is that I do a job and I get paid for it. Yeah. Now yeah. I am writing a book. You have to write fifty to sixty to seventy thousand words without a dime coming to your pocket, yeah. and just believe that one day it's going to come out and show you return. It's a yeah. whole different mindset that you have to have. Yeah, and so yeah, I have a lot of respect for that because yeah. I think so much of content at the moment is that very short form, seeing immediate returns and immediate mm-hmm. reactions, mm-hmm. but going through that whole process of mm. writing something for however many months, years, mm. and not knowing even if people are going to yep, like yep, it, that's yep, yep. really it's tough. Extre- it's extremely humbling, but it's fun as, as well. Yeah. 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 Well, as you like a challenge, mm-hmm. you have the challenge on this podcast. <laughs> yes, let's do it. What a transition. Oh, what a transition. <laughs> Come on, I've done this before. Uh, we're going to challenge you to a game of this or that. Mm. All right, let's do okay? it. Okay, we're going to give you two options. Mm-hmm. You've got to tell us which one and why. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. uh, first of all, Love in the Club or Netflix and Chill? Netflix and Chill, Love in the Club. <laughs> Come on, man. Love in the Club with Raya's movement. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with that? Not about it? Nah, nah, Not going to nah, be doing nah, any nah. TikTok dances Literally, anytime like, soon? I love when my door is closed and I'm on the other side of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, crazy House Party or Chill Games Night? Chill Games Night every single time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Love a board game. Yeah, yeah. Favourite board game at the moment? Favourite board game has always been Ludo and it always will be Ludo. Ludo. Second time that's come up in the podcast, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Ludo. Yeah. Yeah. I've oh, never played it. Oh my God. You see, the problem with other um, games is that you only feel the feeling of winning once the game is done. Mm-hmm. You only feel enjoyment 
So it's like the enjoyment of winning. But in Ludo, you can take somebody's piece off the board at any point in the game if you land on them. So regularly through the game, I get to feel little bursts of victory. So okay. even if you lose a game, by the end of it, you've you've effectively defeated your opponent so many different <laughs> times. You're not competitive so at all, are you? <laughs> nah, you know what? I, I don't even play to win the overall game. No. I'm just a menace on the board that just kills other players. Yeah, yeah, that's all I do. On dates, have you ever done a board game with your dates to really nah. see what their true personality is? Because nah, I feel like that, you get to know a lot about someone see, through a board game. Now, nah, here's the thing. No, I haven't, but I don't really... I don't really do the dating thing. I'd more do the let's be friends and then see what this turns into. Right. Nice. So I would have already seen those traits because we'd have already played games. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. What's worse, laundry or dishes? Dishes. I mean, do you do either of them? Let's be honest. I do laundry. Do so you? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do laundry sometimes, but um, dishes, definitely. Mm -hmm. okay. Because dishes are, they, they sometimes are stained sticks. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. So and, and, and it looks bad. I would, but it looks bad if I use the dishwasher for one dish. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you're washing dishes, to so say like this cup, for example, mm -hmm. when you dry it and you place it on the side, are you placing it like that? Or are you placing it upside down? Like that. Right. Mm. Really? No. I do. I make we loads of mistakes. Friends. I take the wet cup and the wet dish and put it back in the cupboard. Why? Oh. I don't even even meant to. Why did you do that? Yeah, an, an accident until I got told that I'm not supposed to be Why doing would that. You, but then you're just going to get rocks I am shelves. a man. <laughs> And I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. That's a, a mantra to live life by. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yeah. But I do want to ask because um, we've been asking everyone that comes on this season mm -hmm. uh, to bring in something from their home that really means something to them. Their favourite item maybe yes. within their home. Uh, and I believe that you have brought something in for us. In fact, I think that those watching on YouTube might have been able to see it throughout the entire podcast. <laughs> uh, do you want me to get it out? Yeah, yeah. go on then. All right. Okay. Come on, lad. Yep. This is my sentimental item. Um, would you like me to give you the backstory? Yeah. Please. Also, before, okay. like, how did you transport that here? Um, in my hand. In your hand. Yeah. Well, on I, the train. I, I arrived to the building exactly the same time that you did. Yes. Um, and I just saw a man with a giant tiger. Yes. So <laughs> this is Tiger. That's also his name. Mm -hmm. um, I know inventive and creative. I was going to original. Um, <laughs> yes. But I'll tell you how this came to be. When I was living in a flat in London, my friend's father unfortunately passed away and he got all of his dad's belongings. And one of his dad's belongings was a stuffed tiger. And then I started having the tiger in my videos just at the back of the chair. Right. Um, and then basically I moved from his house and then I stopped having the tiger and everybody was like, where's the tiger? So I bought another tiger. Then the pandemic came <laughs> and then you're at the house by yourself and there's no one there. And I'm not going to lie, I hugged up on the tiger a lot of nights. <laughs> and so now this is my guy. So, yeah. Do you sleep with your tiger? Sometimes, man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I <laughs> yeah. do. And I'm not ashamed of no, that. No, I This is be. my guy. Sometimes we watch Netflix together. Do you? Netflix yeah. and chill. Yeah, Netflix and chill. Yeah. Do you have any like house rules that both you and tiger have to follow? <laughs> um, No, he's pretty stationary. I'm not going to lie. But right. um, the thing about it is, is that. It's like having a pet without having to feed it, mm. without yeah. having mm. to take it to the toilet, without ever having to cut it. And yes, sometimes, I'm not going to lie, if I fall asleep and then I wake up and I forget that I have this and I just see it straight away, I get shook. <laughs> Do you, so, I mean, I'm just going to give you a little tip here yeah. because as someone who's had a bit of an issue with pigeons recently, I had to mm -hmm. put a bird of prey outside. Mm -hmm. If you're having an issue with foxes and cats... I've thought about it. And I yet... Tiger next it. to the door. But but I've I've literally thought about it and I'm I'm gonna do that, but I just don't know if I wanna put him through that pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because then if he fails, how's he gonna feel? But mm, anyway, mm. yeah, I I've I have thought about doing that, yeah. <laughs> I was literally thinking about doing that underway here and thought about leaving him actually outside. No, you can't leave him outside. Yeah, yeah, That's, yeah. He'll get all moist and horrible. Exactly, exactly. Right, yeah. so there's no house rules for Tiger, but mm. we're coming around to your house, we're visiting. What yes. are the house rules for us? What are my house rules? <laughs> I feel like you're going to have loads. <laughs> I actually don't. That's no. the problem. I actually bought a house so I could ruin mm. things. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and, and so that nobody has to feel bad when they mash something up. Because a house is there to be lived in, yeah. right? We can't it, be having covers on sofas and that sort of thing. If, if anything, my, my rule is don't tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And everybody that comes to my house tries to tell me what to do with my house. Listen, I have things in awkward place. If I want to put a t-shirt in one of the kitchen cupboards, just don't tell me what to do. <laughs> this is my house. I you am, get what I'm saying? I'm yeah. on a board for <laughs> totally that. On board. Yeah, I like, cannot bear I do mad stuff. Like yeah. I do mad. It's funny because 
<laughs> it's funny because my friend was at my friend was at my house and my cleaner um comes every other day. Right. So this is the yeah. day when my cleaner came, but she's already left. Right. I've mm. obviously spilled some sugar on the kitchen top um table and then Dev said, You're not gonna move that until <laughs> like the day after now. Did you just it? leave it? I left it there. All it takes is a cloth. I know. <laughs> Respect, <laughs> big respect for that. So that's my only rule. My only rule is just like, don't, like all, everything in my house is like proper silly. Like I had a space for a washing machine and a dryer. And somehow my brain told me that buying two washing machine dryers made more sense. So now whenever there's washing going on in my house, the whole house shakes because there's just two washing machines tumbling against each other violently. And that's just, that's just how I live my life. You yeah. are a man of convenience. Man of, that's what it is. I'm yeah. a man of convenience. Yeah. yeah. Proper yeah. silly, proper silly. Well, there is always one question that we like to ask our guests. Yes. Mm. And that is, what does home mean to you? Home means to me comfortability. Mm. Home means to me safety. And home means to me relaxation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? You pretty much said the same thing first time around, actually. Yeah. But you specifically mentioned the TV in the bedroom. But do you know what? That fits <laughs> all of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's comfort, it's safety. Yeah. I do more things than watch TV now. That's why. Like, mm. I feel like before watching TV was like my bag. But it's like now I just do a lot more things because I have a lot more. I do a lot more. What do you call it now when you invite guests? Entertaining. Hosting. Hosting, yeah, yeah. I do a lot more hosting and entertain. I don't feed them, but that, that, that's another thing as well. <laughs> that's another rule for my house as well. I don't have to get you water. You know where the water is. You know where the fridge is. Get yourself, a, yeah, get yourself a drink. Yeah. Mi casa, su casa. <laughs> yeah. That, I love that. Yeah. Unless your first time, if it's your first time coming there, <laughs> then I will treat you with all of that first time hospitality. After your first time now, we all live here, so. Do you yeah. know what I love? Like yeah. when we asked this question, you were like, I don't think I've got many house rules, but then actually, <laughs> and then this happens and that might be Cassie Sacasa however yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> love that where can everybody find you on socials uh, you can find me on Instagram at David Whiteley and that's the main place to. and what about your on. home accounts you've got a home account too right yes at David Whiteley's house there we go <laughs> yeah, yeah, great yeah. There we go. love it thanks dude Thank no problem you. thank you for having me